Hello my dudes, today we are going to unbox and review the Singer CP6350M, aka the Cosplay Machine. I'm curious to find out if this is just a regular heavy duty singer with a fancy paint job and a handful of special accessories, but that's what we are here today to find out. Jinkies, I hope we solve this mystery. Bart and I got up bright and early to drive over to the theater, which is very quiet and serene due to social distancing. Normally, I would be gearing up for our next show, but since I have no actors to put costumes on, I've been gifted with the task of making new curtains. This fabric is extremely heavy, so we decided it was time to invest in a machine that could handle such powerful thickness. Sadly, the regular heavy-duty singers were out of stock, so behold, the CP6350M. The box doesn't specify what any of these really fancy accessories actually are, but it does offer a brief history lesson and a lot of catchy marketing lingo aimed at cosplayers. They also have an app that I probably won't be using, but let me know if you're curious in the comments and maybe I'll check that out. So, first of all, we have a walking foot for quilting and sewing stretch fabrics and a ruffler for ruffling. Next up are needles and a side cutter, which we'll look at later in this video, and a machine cover for modesty. The machine itself has a metal frame, but the buttons, dials, and levers are plastic. Not really a big deal, but it feels a little cheap, and I hate to tell you that it does not come with a full set of instructions, so you'll have to download that from their website. It is a very unique and nice looking machine nonetheless. Let's open it up and see what surprises it has to offer from within. It also comes with a buttonhole foot, as well as a foot for sewing on buttons, although I'd rather do that by hand. Next we have a clearance plate for sewing through very thick seams and four bobbins. I wish these were metal, but I understand that plastic is probably easier to manufacture. We also have an auxiliary spool pin for winding a bobbin without having to unthread your machine, which is very nice. The spindy stick is a quilting guide, and this is a roller foot for sewing on leather or vinyl. As we all know, everybody needs a zipper foot, although I still prefer to sew them on by hand. And this is a cording foot for sewing on piping or decorative trim. This Teflon foot is meant for decorative stitching on vinyl, suede, or leather, and the L screwdriver does exactly what it promises to do, such as adjusting the buttonhole stitch length. Next, we have a felt donut for the spool pin, very nice, and a seam ripper and brush. They give you another set of basic needles, and finally, an extension table, which is nice to have, but not really something you necessarily need. On its own, this would cost about $100, so it is a selling point for the cosplay machine since the regular heavy-duty machine does not include the extension table. I like that it has a ruler printed on it and that the legs are easy to adjust. This machine has 32 built-in stitches, which is probably more than most sewers will ever need. Peeling off the protective film was thrilling, and I wish I could do it over and over again. The foot pedal and power cord are combined into one unit, but are otherwise unremarkable. The power switch is on the right side of the machine, and three, two, one. If you've ever used a Singer, this machine should feel pretty familiar to you. It has a top-loading bobbin, which is not my favorite, but I grew up with the older machines, so it's really just a matter of opinion. Evidently, top-loading bobbins are easier to load and adjust the tension on, so front-loading bobbins are becoming a thing of the past. The bobbin was easy to wind and insert, and it is not a difficult machine to thread. But the automatic needle threader did not want to cooperate with me. I have really bad eyesight, so the built-in needle threader is a really great tool, but it just took me a few minutes to get the hang of using it. If it's your first time using an automatic needle threader, just be patient. These are tricky, but seriously, so useful, and I probably wouldn't purchase a machine that didn't have one at this point. I should mention that you do get a printed set of instructions just for threading the machine in the box, which is great for first-time sewers. I was also pleased to discover that I didn't have to do a lot of fussing with the tension dial. This machine was ready to go straight out of the box, which is a first in my experience. Thanks to the metal frame and high performance motor, the CP6350 is a joy to sew with. 
It just feels good and solid, and when you're sewing at full speed, it doesn't shift around or move on the table, which is an issue with some of the lighter weight machines. It sews just fine on regular fabric, and just for fun, I sewed through 16 layers of cotton, which is honestly a terrible life choice that nobody should be making, but I did it for science, and the CP6350 rose to the challenge. You're probably going to break a needle if you're sewing like this, so I really wouldn't recommend it, but it's nice to know that the machine can handle that kind of thickness. I know for a fact that my computerized sewing machine could not handle sewing through that much fabric. Now, let's take a look at the side cutter. This is evidently supposed to take the place of an overlock machine or serger, but I found that it was difficult to use, and while I did eventually sort it out, I think you can get the same effect using a basic sewing foot and an overlock stitch, so why bother with the side cutter attachment at all? Even using a regular zigzag stitch on the edge of your fabric will really help it to keep from fraying, and you don't need any fancy attachments to get that done. Don't get me wrong, I like that they included this accessory, but my serger is faster and if I can avoid changing out the presser feet, I'll just use the regular foot. I spent a couple of hours putting together masks just to get a feel for mass producing pieces on the CP6350, and I think I'm in love. Other than a broken needle, I didn't run into any real issues. I still think the plastic dials and buttons feel a little bit chintzy, but that's a minor complaint. It's got a fun design and the accessory kit is fairly impressive. If there's anything I'd add to this machine, it would be a kit and instructions for maintaining it over time, because that's really going to affect how long this machine actually lasts in our costume shop. But how does this machine compare to Singer's other heavy-duty model? Let's take a look at the website and compare the two. The CP6350 is pandering hard to grab the attention of the cosplay community, and it retails for almost $500, which is on the pricey side for a non-computerized machine. The accessory kit is nice enough, and I think this is going to be a great machine for beginners to learn to sew on, so I'm excited about that. On the other hand, the Singer 4432 retails for $270 and comes with a lot of the same features, minus the extra feet and attachments that you can still buy separately if you decide that you really want them. These machines are so similar that after a few strenuous minutes of number crunching, I came to the shocking conclusion that they are exactly the same machine. I even laid the two manuals next to each other, and they didn't even bother to change the illustration. Nice try, Singer, but you can't fool this clown. See, when you do clownery, the clown comes back to bite. All joking aside, this is a great machine, and since we were able to get it on sale, we pretty much got the accessory kit for free. I think the ruffler foot and the cording foot are probably going to be the two things that I use the most out of it, but I think this machine is great, and I would definitely recommend it. I'm curious to know what you would prefer, a heavy duty machine or a lightweight portable model? Let me know up in the comment section. Also, tell me if you wanna know more about costuming. I love talking about it and I have nothing else to do right now. I'm definitely not the best seamstress, but I do get paid to play dress up with people and that is a job that I will always be grateful for. Our upcoming production of Cinderella is temporarily on hold, but when the time comes, I look forward to slamming together a number of vests, petticoats, and quick rigged ball gowns for all of my actor friends to inevitably destroy because in musical theater, if you don't bust out a seam or two, you're probably not dancing hard enough. I had a really good time making this review, and I have to give a big thank you to the Hardin County Schools Performing Arts Center for letting me use their space and equipment to make it. Thanks again for watching. I love you guys so much, and I will definitely see you next time.